This is, unfortunately, the second time I've had to record this video because the first time the backup save and the regular save got removed when Adobe Audition crashed on me while I was adding post-production effects. Thanks so much, Adobe, for making my job twice as hard and for making me infinite times as angry. Let's talk about a topic that I absolutely hate to talk about. I don't want to talk about this player in this way, but it's unfortunate because that's kind of the picture we have to paint when discussing this player and his overall progression. We're talking about Ottawa Senators' former draftee, Jonathan Dolian, or we can just say Jonathan Dolan, because that's how the Anglophones over here in North America pronounce his name, but... Dolan is a name whom we have discussed a ton on this YouTube channel over the past few years. If you've been following everything that I started doing when we started making regular videos in like 2017-ish, you would see a ton of videos talking about the prospects for the Canucks, the games for the Canucks, the stories with the Canucks. So Dolan and his story was very well documented onto this YouTube channel. But you know, it's been a few years since we've really highlighted what happened with this guy. So let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? Jonathan Dahlin, as he was said in Sweden because he's Swedish, was drafted 42nd overall by the Ottawa Senators in the 2016 NHL Draft. So he was a second round guy, and his production in the Allsvenskan was good enough to get him drafted in this spot. You gotta remember the Allsvenskan is pretty much the AHL of Sweden, the SHL is the top tier league in that country, and his production in the Allsvenskan was pretty okay. 29 points, 51 games played, not necessarily a super good productive season for a 17 turning 18 year old, but there were enough skills on display for Dolan and his profile that made him a selection. He had the natural instincts to know where to be on the ice for prime scoring chances, and he was a dangerous offensive dynamo. Dolan is a shifty scorer slash playmaker with refined technical skills and excellent overall awareness. Furthermore, an agile and creative player with great character. He handles the puck well at top speed and has great vision, good work ethic, and a very capable two-way player. Not to mention the fact that Dahlin's father is actually Ulf Dahlin, who debuted in the Rangers system in 1988. He played in the NHL till 03, so if you're a fan of any of these teams, then hey, you're probably familiar with Jonathan Dahlin and his father. But Dahlin went back to the Allsvenskan for his 2016-17 season, where he jumped up to a point per game on the year. In the middle of that season, though, his rights in the NHL got traded from the Ottawa Senators to the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks sent over Alex Burrows in a trade that both fan bases saw as a win-win. Burrows helped the team out in a limited but still valuable role going to the third round of the Stanley Cup playoffs, and you had yourselves a lot of fans in Vancouver saying, hey, this might be Benning actually starting the rebuild. We're trading away older guys for younger guys. We're trading away Burroughs and Yannick Hansen for Dahlin and Goldobin. This is the future right here. And unfortunately, that overall direction did not manifest itself any further as Jim Benning proceeded into the next few off seasons to make the same moves and mistakes that we had been accustomed to him making. But either way, Dahlin was now in the Vancouver Canucks system to end off the 16-17 year. And the Vancouver Canucks made an even bigger splash when they took one of Dahlin's best friends friends, and Dahlin's center in the Osvenskin, fifth overall in the draft. His name was Elias Pettersson, and he was a guy, when paired with Dahlin as his left wing, who was absolutely phenomenal in the Osvenskin. All of a sudden, the Vancouver Canucks had two players in this same system, Dahlin on the left wing, Pettersson in the middle, that were both extraordinarily talented and productive. Vancouver then saw a lot of success with Pedersen. He went to the SHL. He had all those junior records. Now he is in Vancouver doing his thing, and he is looking fantastic. Meanwhile, for Dolan, he didn't take that same route. He had offers to go to the SHL and take his play to the higher levels in Sweden, but he declined those opportunities. Instead, he decided to stick around with his hometown team of Timra, play with them for another season without Pedersen, and try to get them to the SHL through the Allsvenskan and the qualifications. He was playing without Pedersen, so his point production staying the same was actually pretty good. There was improvement there, seeing that he didn't need Pedersen to produce. And he accomplished his goal as well. The Timra IK eventually made themselves into the SHL for 2018-19, but in this time frame, Dolan had made the transition to North American hockey. He was playing for the Utica Comets in the AHL, the Vancouver Canucks AHL affiliate, and he had 29 points in 50 games played. However, after that stint, he actually got traded to San Jose in the midst of that season. 
Now, there was an entire controversy that popped up with his ice time, deployment, opportunity in the AHL. Should you be given opportunities like that, or are you supposed to earn them? Conversations like that popped up, and it was a really big story amongst a lot of Canucks fans and prospect watchers. What exactly was happening with Dahlin? Benning just decided to nip it in the bud and sent him over to San Jose for Linus Carlson, who today is a junior player absolutely tearing up the SHL. We made a video about him breaking Elias Pettersson's junior production a few weeks ago. But for Dolan, his transition to San Jose wasn't really all too smoothly. In fact, for the next two seasons, he went back to the Timra IK in the Allsvenskan once again, because when Dolan wasn't playing in Timra, they got demoted. And Dolan just decided, you know, he's got to go back. He's got to find out what it is that makes this game fun for him. And he's just got to play in a way that allows him to want to progress further and take that next step. You could say it was a really questionable decision to have a guy who was 22, 23 years old playing in the second tier Swedish league. And to be fair, he did really well, but he was in that position where you kind of needed him to do well because he's playing in the second tier Swedish league. He had 70 plus points in both those years and eventually came back to San Jose. This season, he's got 22 points in 56 games played, which is on pace for 32 points over a full 82 game season. However, and this is the really heartbreaking part of it all, Jonathan Dalian had a pretty good start to the year. Let's take a look at his first 15 games on the season from October until November 20th, 2021. In this span, he had seven goals and two assists for nine total points, which I get it, you don't want to see the guy only have two assists comparative to seven goals in 15 games, but still, that's a 50-point pace he was scoring at. And if you do the math for the goals right here, seven divvy 15 multiplied out by 82, Dolan was on pace for 38 goals, which wouldn't be bad in the slightest for a 23-turning 24-year-old rookie. The problem is, though, on November 20th against the Washington Capitals, Dolan took an awkward hit behind the Capitals' net, and he ended up dislocating his shoulder because of it. Now, you wouldn't be able to tell what happened based off of the replay. It doesn't look like anything too bad. But after he gets into a little altercation, you see him really clutch onto that shoulder and skate away. And after Dolan recovered from this really strange injury that he had, you can do the math on the remaining production he had. Dolan, who had seven goals in his first 15 games on the year, had five goals in his next 41 games after the injury. In fact, you take a look at what's been happening recently, Dolan, April 14th against the Blackhawks, got healthy scratched. The Sharks went with 11 forwards and seven defensemen that night, and you look at all the games he has had recently, the guy has been on an absolute donut streak ever since his last point on March 12th versus the LA Kings. It was a goal in the Sharks' 5-0 win. It gets even more interesting when you realize that Dolan's contract is expiring this offseason. He's making $750,000, and he's gonna need to re-sign with San Jose if he wants to return to the NHL. Now, luckily for the Sharks, according to San Jose Hockey Now, Shang Peng, this article was published on the 11th, it appears that Dolan does indeed want to come back to the Sharks. His agent contacted San Jose Hockey Now and said that his priority is to play for the Sharks in the number one league in the world. This article brings up some rumors that Dahlin would want to go back to Sweden like he did three years ago, and the agent goes out there and says, no, those are just rumors. And so, if Dahlin does indeed resign, and if Dahlin uses this offseason to really make sure that everything in his body is 100% normal the way it was a year ago in September 2021, I think there is a really good NHL role that proceeds itself for this type of player because he is a gifted offensive talent. He thrives playing with really good players because he complements their playstyle so well. Dolan and Pedersen were seen as a potential dynamic duo in Vancouver for a good amount of time before Dolan got traded away. You gotta remember, Dolan's rookie season in the AHL was Pedersen's rookie season in the NHL, so there was a lot of overlap between hype and expectation for both of these guys. It's just for Dolan, there were so many unfortunate things that happened with his development here in the AHL in Utica that eventually he got traded, eventually he went back to Sweden, eventually he's back in the NHL, and eventually, after a few injuries, it appears that scoring touch has really left itself out from the start of the season up until now. So for Jonathan Dolan, this is absolutely one of those stories that I hate telling, but I feel like we do need to go over this because as a Canucks fan, I still want to see Dolan go out there and be the best version that he is able to be. I still want to see him become a middle six, maybe 50 point winger in the NHL because the guys had a really rough path to get here. I think the best he can do is yet to come.
He's 24 years old, so it's not like he's super young, but there still is a little bit more time, I feel, for him to grow, develop, and prosper in the NHL. So, talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about Jonathan Dahlian, or Jonathan Dahlin, and his entire progression from Ottawa to Vancouver to San Jose, also in the Utica system to the Barracuda, back over to Timbra, etc. Do you think he's got an extended role next season? Do you think he's kind of plateaued? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this player. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. And bye.